Okay, here we are with our homework and remembering 5.8. Please leave out your blue-violet color. And let's go ahead and take some a look at these problems. You also need to have the date. I'm going to check to see if you use the color like you're supposed to by putting a blue-violet ring or box around the homework side. Which side? The homework side. Okay, lesson 5.8. So I'm going to leave you to do most of these because a lot of them you'll find in your journal and some of them are mental math. Um, and let's take a look at number three though. You ready? We're just going to use our pencil on this. So we've got decimals in both places on number three and you're going to have to, um, sorry it's not letting me zoom in for you, you're going to have to just look really carefully at number three. Can you see it right here? It's a little blurry. There we go. All right, so you've got to move the decimal twice, which means you have to move this decimal twice. Ah, you can only move it one. So you have to put that zero so that you can move it two. So this problem just became, you ready? Five is the divisor and 480 is the dividend. See how I wrote it up here and to the left a little so that I could work down right here? That would be a very clever thing to do when you rewrite. 5 won't go into 4, but it does go into 48 9 times. And then 5 goes perfectly into 30 6 times. So I put a 6 in the quotient and my proof at the bottom. I'm going to check. Make sure that you wrote all of those things out. The correct answer is going to be circled in blue, Violet. It is 96 on number 3. 96. Okay, I'm going to let you look around for those things. On number 5, it says circle the division that does not have the same answer as the others. So this is pretty interesting. All you have to look at is the same number of decimal places. Are the same number of decimal places represented? So here's an example. No decimal, no decimal. Okay, this one would move one place and one place. So it would become 554 divided by 6. This one would move 2. And this one would, if you moved this one too, you'd have to put a 0 in there. So this said 54 divided by 6. This said 54 divided by 6 eventually. This one did not. I'm going to circle it and just go through the rest to make sure. This one, if I moved it, would be 54 divided by, if you move this one too, you have to move this one too, 6. This one you move 3 times to get 54, and you'd move 3 times and you'd get 6. So it was that one that was in the middle there. So you are going to have to have all those little markings that we just did, so make sure you go back and also make sure you circle this with blue-violet. All right. We're going to solve one of these story problems together, and I would love for it to be um, number eight. It says, tomorrow in the town of Eastwood, there will be a big race. The course is 5.25 kilometers long. A water station will be set up every 0 0.5, 0 0.75 kilometer, including at the finish line. How many water stations will there be? So the fact that this says, here's the total, 5.25, I circle that. Here is the word every. That means I'm going to be doing division by the amount of stops. So remember, people can stop and get water here by the amount of water stations. So I take 5.25, the total. So I do total, I'm writing this below, divided by stations. I'm going to say station distance. That way it makes sense. I take my total length and I divide it by the station distance. So 5.25 divided by 0 0.75. Okay, I got to move it twice which means I have to move this one twice and straight up. So my problem just became 75 as the divisor 
and 525 as the dividend, but then there was a decimal that's going to be kind of up here at the end. And maybe we'll use it, maybe we won't. Let's begin. 75. Ooh, I have a hard time doing 75s. Um, I know 25s because of quarters, but I don't know 75, so I'm going to round this to 80 because I can do my eight times tables and then have a zero at the end. So I'm looking at how many times will 75 go into 5? No. Into 52? No. I'm asking how many times will 75 go into 525? Okay. So I look for 80. 8 times 4, I'm just guessing here, would be 32 with a 0. 320. So I get to go quite a bit more. 8 times 7 would be 56 with a 0. So 560. Uh, that feels a little too high. What do you think? Should we try six? I mean, should we try seven? That was 56 because that seems really high, 560. But then again, we went up by five to get to 80. I think we might try seven or six. Let's shoot for seven and see what happens. Glad we didn't try six because it is exactly seven. So you put a seven here. You didn't really need the decimal. So you take that whole number of seven and you move it into a complete sentence. How many water stations will there be? There will be seven water stations. Okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought it might be. Hopefully you're sticking through there with me. I know you can do this. Let's try one more together. We'll try, um, we'll try number nine. Marisol's bedroom has an area. Ooh, I already know it's gonna be division because they gave me the area and they're asking for width. So I divide, here's where I'm gonna write it. I divide, I take the area and I divide by the length and it will give me the width. Okay, so the area 29.76 divided by, oh I didn't even, let's circle these, 29.76, 29.76 and 6.2. So that's over here. The very first thing I do is have to get rid of the decimals. So we look at the divisor, it's in 6.2. So I move it over how many times? One time. So if I move this one over one time to get 62, then I have to move this one over one time to get 297.6. So write that in the new problem. And because there's a decimal now in the dividend, I move it straight up into the quotient. How important is it that it's directly above the old, the old one? Very important. In fact, I make it pretty bold. Okay, Ooh, now I'm doing a double digit again. 62 rounds to what? Say it with me in three, two, one. 60. 62 rounds to 60. So I do my six times tables to help me. But first of all, will 62 go into two? No. Will it go into 29? No. So you're looking at it going into 297. Okay, so 60. Six times three, 180. Ooh, a lot higher. Six times five, 300. Well, six times five is 30. And then a zero would be 300. That's too high. But it's close. But this is when I was saying it was 60 and the real number is 62. So it can't be 5. Because 60 times 5 was already too high. So 62 times 5 would definitely be too high. So it's got to be 4. So I come and do the original number times it by 4. Do your own work on that and see if you get the same answer as me. Look 
for you. Okay, so let's put the 4 in the quotient. Let's put our 248 where we can subtract. And I would, before you bring down, I would just make sure that that number is smaller than the divisor. Smaller than 62. I love red, green, and borrowing. Lots of it. I got 49 as my remain as my leftover before I bring down the six. So it worked. And I start over. 496. Well, it's got to be a lot higher than four because it was 248 and 496 is almost 500. So it's about this doubled to get from 248 to 496. See how this is almost 250 and this is almost 500? So I'm going to think because those are about doubled, my reasoning here is to try 8. Because if I times it by 4, I got this. And I'm trying to get it almost doubled. So I think we should try 8. Let's try 62 times 8. See if you get the same answer that I get. Ta-da! It was exactly 496. So 8 is my quotient line. And my proof is showing that it got to 0. So it's 4.8. But I put it in the story problem. Can you circle 4.8 in blue-violet? Put it in the story problem. The length of the room is this. What is its width? The width is 4.8, but if it's a measurement, I have to tell you the unit or what size, so it's meters. The width is 4.8 meters. Look at all that work we just did. You can do this. I know you can. You just need to show all of your work, go slow, look for the decimals in the divisor, get rid of the decimals in the divisor, and then how you get rid of it in the divisor means you have to do that to the dividend, right? Then you can move the decimal straight up. Will you turn the paper to the remembering side? Let's just take a quick look at what we have to do there. Ooh, rounding. That's fun. You know how to multiply. You already know a lot of this division. You do not have to do stretch your thinking. But I want to look at the rounding real quick. Just a reminder, when you round and it asks you to round to the nearest tenth, it means you have to end in the tenths place. So I would just like to try number three with you. So I underline the number that's in the tenths. That means that that number, the one, looks over at the four. So draw an arrow over to the four. And you don't even care, none of these other numbers matter right now. It's just the four telling the one what to do. Five or more, raise the score. Four or less, let it rest. So you let that one rest. Everything in front of it stays the same. So the decimal and the eight, everything behind it either changes to zeros or drops off. Because this is a decimal, it just drops off. 8.1. Let's try number four. Now we're rounding to the nearest hundredth. Let's do the, the let's do the middle one. Actually, let's do the number four. <laughs> so round. So you have to underline the number that's in the hundredth. Look to the next number to the right. What does that nine tell the six? To raise the score. So the six changes to a seven. Everything in front of it, so the other seven, stays the same. The decimal, the four. Everything behind it drops off because it's decimals. If it was whole numbers, it changes to zeros, but decimals, it just drops off. Notice how I'm circling my final answer even when it's on the line, 4.77. Okay, 
You can do this. You need to check Think Central today for sure, but you have time to complete your homework and remembering. I will definitely be looking for this blue-violet, so make sure that you follow directions.